wealth of information on the web and those websites are just going to, it was worth a talk just to get those websites. So I'm going to use them from now on when we mail out because it, it is hard to know where to go and you need reliable info. So I reckon everyone should copy them down. So I'm going to bring Michael Stoopman up now, up now, talk to you. He, he's been through a major road slide to get here this morning. And he's got an amazing story for you. And I think Sister's worked it out so you'll be able to see the pictures. And I really appreciate him coming. He's driven down this morning. And he'll be here tomorrow, I hope now. And Deb will be here tomorrow too if you're staying in. And she'll be able to talk much longer. She has a wealth of information we'll draw out of her. And listen, Michael, thanks very much. I'm just going to sneak in quickly. Uh, no, we're not going to talk about fast. I want to quickly tell you something quickly. Uh, everything is going to be on YouTube anyway, so those that are panically writing everything down, you'll be able to look it up if you Google on YouTube. What do we Google? Medican. M-E-D-I-C-A-N. I'll put it on anyway, so it's all be recorded. Now, I've told some people before, if you want to not get caught in a rush, although it's not too big a crowd, when we have a break and say, caught a too early for me. And so I left school early, you know, like a good Aussie country boy. I'd get drunk all the time. It was kind of the culture. Um, I got a good job, went over to London working for a stockbroker. And I got restless, really. I was 23, 24, started thinking. It's a mistake to start thinking. You know, lucky the people who never start thinking, I often think. And, you know, I'd seen incredible inequality come through Asia and then go into Europe. So, you know, I needed to know, and I, here was I, you know, to, helping Swiss banks to get richer. So I went travelling, and I was already smoking tobacco, so it was easy for me. So I had this smoke of hash in Afghanistan, having no idea what I was doing, and t had this total religious experience. And, you know, and that set me off on this search. And, you know, I end up 15 years later in Nimbin with a lot of other people who'd had similar experiences and set off on a similar path. And what happened to me is I used to get migraines a lot. And, my, you know, anyone who gets migraines will tell you it's a shocking thing. You know, you get under the blankets, you want to vomit. And you know, suddenly I realised I'm not getting any migraines anymore. And that was the first indication for me that you know, it wasn't just drugs, this was a medicine. And, and I've had periods when I didn't smoke pot, and I'm much better off if I do smoke pot. And I smoke it all the time. It's like so many people get up in the morning and take their pharmaceutical pills. For me, getting out, like a lot of people who live around here, you get up in the morning and have some cannabis is the same thing. And yet there's this whole story out there that as soon as you have cannabis, you turn into an idiot or you're totally lazy or whatever. It certainly can make you think for a long time. But once you're used to it, it becomes your medicine. In the whole Northern Rivers here, there are literally, across Australia, there are thousands of people who are daily cannabis users. It work, Somehow it works for us. And the pharmaceutical companies have never really been able to put it in a pill. Because if you isolate one bit of it, it doesn't work as well. It's, uh, for me, it's just like whole food. You know, whole food is the key to good health, I reckon. The, the more you, you are eating stuff that's come straight from nature to you, the better. The less it's interfered with, the better. And clearly organic is a total priority. People, I reckon, completely underestimate the chemical dramas we've gotten, why cancer is so prevalent in our society. But, but, you know, processed foods are a huge drama. And once you process cannabis and isolate it, it doesn't work. So you need the whole thing, like you need whole food. It's the same thing. Once you've got the whole plant, it all interacts with each other. And, you know, they've discovered more than 100 cannabinoids now in the plant, having only just discovered THC when, Deb, in 1988, I think, an Israeli... Uh, Scientists discovered THC and isolated the thing that all of us potheads like. But now they've realised CBD, you know, perhaps the second most prevalent cannabinoid out of a hundred or more, is also has huge healing benefits. And 
you know, they discovered that can stop some epileptic seizures. So research has gone rampant on cannabis at the moment. Suddenly all the cynicism and talk has been exposed because as I realise now, it was all about money. And pain relief is probably the best business on the planet. Most profitable business, you guys feel free, find a seat. Most profitable business on the planet. If I can take your pain away and make you feel good, you're going to sell your house to pay me. That's what I've seen in Nimbin. I've seen people who are so desperate to get rid of their pain, and be, whether they're using heroin or whatever, cannabis, whatever, they, they, it becomes a priority for them. You know, you just, people want to live a life pain free. People want to feel good. And, and the pharmaceutical industry really banned, made illegal, the best pain relieving herbs on the planet. The first one's the opium poppy. They control that whole industry now. Most of their pain relief comes through an opiate derivative or, or from the Tasmanian poppy crops they grow by licence. Cannabis, second best pain reliever, and the coca plant. And you've all read how the cocaine industry's exploded. So they're the three best pain relieving plants in the creation. Make them illegal, you get these huge black markets, but you control the industry. The police are working for Big Pharma, as I understand it. And they've kind of convinced the politicians that, you know, it's a terrible thing. There's a couple of reasons for that. Cannabis is different and it's fat soluble, so it'll stay in your blood and your system for a couple of months. So all the people who get admitted to a mental health thing who are poly drug users, using all sorts of drugs, everyone gets drug tested. Everyone gets drug tested when you have a car accident now, etc. Or you get arrested, drug tested. You know, the other drugs don't pop up much, but cannabis will come up. Anyone who smoked cannabis in the last month, it's going to pop up. So there's been a lot of distorted figures. That's an interesting one. You know, I remember talking to the Victorian Health Minister because they had 10% of hospital beds in Victoria were due to cannabis. I'm going, what's going on? Comes up in the blood tests. So there's a lot of misunderstandings. And that's when John Howard started his thing, you know, cannabis will send you mad. Anyway, it's not totally untrue because under prohibition, most pot now in Australia is grown indoors in a chemical bath, hydroponic pot, hiding it from the police. And it's grown in chemicals. They've bred a strain of cannabis that's really high in THC and less CBD in the other cannabinoids. So it just fires your imagination but doesn't ground you out, which CBD is a balancing thing. So without realising it, all these um, well-intentioned criminal gangs have bred the, the biggest, fattest buds full of THC, skunk weed, they call it skunk in the media, and, and it's grown in chemicals, it's grown indoors, it never sees sunlight. It's a different product to the bush cannabis that we'll grow out here, around here. And obviously we'll make better medicine. It's a natural, organic product. And I think that's why we've had so much attention in NIMBA in the last... You know, building over the last 10 years. California got legal medical cannabis in 1996. That's more than 20 years ago. It's just been a win-win for everybody. The jails are emptying, the police have got other things to do. The health benefits are massive and the health cost savings are huge. So last year, January the 1st this year, they've legalised cannabis for everybody. And it was a scam anyway. Anybody could get a permit to get the medicine. So it's interesting in Western, you know, all that whole West Coast of America has got legal cannabis now. And the results are coming in. And one of the extraordinary results, and, and it was a survey I just read yesterday, of the thousands of people in this research who were using opioid pain relief, 73% preferred to use cannabis. So you don't get the after effects. You don't, you don't feel wiped out with cannabis. You know, I've just smoked a big joint, you know, tell me if I'm not making sense. So, you know, opium, if I'd had a big hit of heroin, I'd be really sleepy. It's great sleeping stuff. And different cannabises wake you up and put you to sleep. So there's all this stuff we've got to learn. But, but the pharmaceutical companies, are, their profits are totally threatened by legalising cannabis. It's a huge thing. And they're already seeing the changes in America. You know, car accidents are down, alcohol abuse is down, violence is down, 
all the stats are quite big and significant. So, you know, governments aren't going to be able to avoid it. This week, Canada, Canada announced it's going to regulate cannabis and allow everyone to, anyone, any adult to grow four plants and carry 30 grams, which is heaps. And that's coming in October. That's huge. You know, they're one of the G7 countries, is it? They're a Commonwealth country. At some point, Australia's going to have to wake up. But at the moment, the pharmaceutical industry and the police, I reckon, our police are unique. You know, New South Wales Police, oldest police force on the planet. And this is jobs and power, and for them it's jobs and power. You know, they legalise cannabis, they're going to hate it. They're going to hate it. They have not liked Nimbin for a long time. If they legalise cannabis, they really won't like us, I reckon. The other big drama that's happening for people is the roadside drug testing. And it's a big drama for all of us. And a lot of people I know won't use the medicine because it can get picked up on the, and you can't lose your licence, especially for country people. I reckon they should treat country licence loss you know, more seriously than if you live in the city. So around here people lose their licence, then they risk it and drive, then you're in big trouble, you can end up in jail. I personally had a really good friend who gave up alcohol 20 years ago. I think cannabis is the best drug on the planet for giving up anything, ice or alcohol. Nimbin is full of people who smoke pot, who used to be alcoholics, used to be ice addicts, used to be heroin junkies. But cannabis soothes the pain or tension or whatever, and they can still operate well. So it's just got huge potential in that area. Anyway, I had this good friend recently, a top artist, and he'd used cannabis for 20 years, lost his licence twice, and he, was an art, he had to go out painting. Aboriginal fellow, he was painting all the sacred sites. He stopped smoking. He was dead in six months. So it keeps a lot of people alive. That's a real thing, that. And um, Malcolm Lee will be talking later on today. He, he's an infamous grower and medicine maker who's just healed so many people, got busted, and the judge let him off because he was so impressed what he was doing. But he reckons 300 people a day are dying that could... No, don't have to suffer like they are in Australia. He, he, he's an extremely interesting guy. I've got great speakers for you today. Anyway, the big reason why I, I, I'm, I'm quite conservative in lots of ways. I'm cynical about lots of hippie, you know, what do they call them, um, you know, paranoid theories. But cannabis, you know, I've been smoking for 40 years and, and I've researched it. I've spent ages involved with it in every way. It's incredibly safe. And that's why we can talk about it so easily. You know, I, I'm the last person going to encourage anyone to take something that's risky. You can have too much and get a real scare. Because, as a psychiatrist said to me once, it's manure for your imagination. So I'm a great believer in you start low and you go slow. And you just have a tiny little bit, and you don't need to be frightened. It can fire up your imagination, which is why artists love it. But its great pain-relieving quality is it's a relaxant. You somehow you let go. And most pain is just inflammation, so it reduces the swelling that little bit. That's what I reckon anyway. We'll see what Dr Deb says, but it's just it's simple for me. And they can't quite nail it down because it has mystical qualities. You know, they, they built temples to this plant. It has a whole spiritual side, which, you know, Nimbin's kind of famous for. The CIA used it as a truth drug because they reckon everyone gets innocent and just starts talking. You know, you fall into trusting and, you know, you feel good or you feel God. The word comes from the same root, by gad. It's interesting stuff. So, you know, it's a huge part of Nimbin culture. It, it's insightful, it's connected us back with the earth and it's connected us back with ourselves in a whole new way. Which is hard for anybody to understand if you've never tried it. It's like you try and tell people the effect of alcohol if they've never tried it. It's difficult to describe. We're talking about a mind-altering substance, which you know, freak out, mind-altering. And they take pills every day which are mind-altering. So, you know, it's a big scam for me, the war on drugs, and it's the pharmaceutical industry that's profiting. But there's this other side to it where they're insightful drugs and they're spiritual drugs and people don't want you thinking too much. 
not in this society anyway, questioning stuff. So, as Dr. Deb walked outside, I think, she brought a trivia quiz to do today. So I, I said to her, you've got to leave that till after lunch, because there'll be people here who need to catch up on cannabis. But she's been a doctor, uh, she, she's, you know, she was a single mum, put herself through Queensland University, became a doctor, and has used cannabis for a long time for her dramas. I should tell you, I'm whispering. And, and I find her really game and bold and witty. And I think Caroline will go and get her. Is Dr. Deb there? Yes. Here she is. Oh, yeah. Tell her to come up here. I want to introduce her. She's come to a few of these Medicans. We do this annual Mardi Gras at Nimbin, the first weekend in May. And she... Come up here, Deb. You're on. You ready? Yes, yes. <laughs> She did a hypothetical at Mardi Gras this year, which I was totally impressed at you able to do that. Anyway, um, and she's got a trivia quiz, but we're going to do that after lunch. Yeah, yeah. Okay? And so I reckon there's quite a lot. Were you, were you here and you saw half the people have never been here before? Yep. Don't know lots about pot. So, you know, I've already dogged you in as a bit of a chuffer. So you'll... <laughs> yeah. Tell them your experience. Anyway, many thanks for coming. Thank you, Chief. Yes, yeah, so how can I get back at him? Hmm, <laughs> for that one. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, yes, um, you know, these workshops have been going for a while now and they're usually fairly informal. And so Michael and I do seem to have this problem with communication, <laughs> as in technological communication. And um, so I'd organise to do this.